This is Money Mind on CNA 938. I'm Chu Wee Lin with Stanley Leung. To start a business, scale operations successfully, and maybe sell it for a sizable sum at a later stage. That's practically every entrepreneur's ambition. Of course, while many may dream of this, few are able to achieve it. But our guest today has been there and done that. And he did so when he was just 33 years young. In 2017, he sold his web hosting company, Vodian Internet Solutions, to an Australian online solutions provider for $30 million. How did he do it? And what can budding entrepreneurs learn from his success story? Time to find out from our guest today. We're joined by tech entrepreneur, Elvin Poe. Elvin, thank you for joining us today on CNA 938. Hi. Yeah, honored to be here. Well, now, well, well it says uh, on your website that you uh, come from a low to middle income uh, background. And was it always, though, your ambition to make lots of money? And were you driven by other goals, though? Um, wow, that's, that's a long story in itself. Well, initially, I first started off, uh, you know, having, being a student and having to find uh, pocket money by myself. You know, if I wanted to hang out with my friends, I had to get money. Uh, my family didn't have the means to, to give me like pocket money every day to, to do that. So I was deciding between having a part-time job and actually like working on my freelance web design projects. Uh, I chose doing freelance work and that eventually grew into the business um, that Vodian was. So that was how I got started. Uh, money, while it was the main concern back then, like eventually made me realize that a business is all about creating value and if you can create value for your customers then um, you've got a really good business going on and and that showed me the importance of, of really being like responsible uh, to our clients and making sure that we are always there for them right and tell us how you got into the web hosting business at the time did you see that this was a sector that had a lot of potential or did you sort of stumble onto it by accident it was really by accident, I think. Back then, I was a 17-year-old kid, um, 17, 18 years old. Um, the only thing that I wanted to do was play around with computers, and that was something that I was really good at. So when I uh, found out that I could actually make an income by doing freelance web, um, website design, that was how I started, you know, uh, Vodian. And after a while, I realized that it wasn't scalable. And this is a business that I did together with my co-founder back then. So the two of us was, were, were both students and we found that it wasn't scalable. So we were looking at what was the most logical um, way of, of pivoting. And we, we realized that all our clients, they needed web hosting. And that became the, the, the next most uh, logical business to pivot to. And that was how Vodian, the web hosting provider, got started. Right, so between the founding of that uh, business to when it finally got acquired by Australian online solutions provider Dreamscape Networks, how long, yeah. how many years did that take? Uh, that was a really long period. I was a, a poly student back then when I was 17. Um, the business grew for about 17 years and we had to go through all kinds of you know, obstacles and hurdles along the way. It was a, it was a journey of I ups bet. and downs, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, so, so it, I, I guess it's, I, I like to tell people it was an overnight success that took like 17 years um, before. before <laughs> There's the many, many overnights. Yeah. So yeah, 17 years. That's how long it took uh, before the business got acquired. And, and when it did, when it did, what did you feel? Did you feel like, okay, time to, you know, sit back, kick up my legs, retire on a beach somewhere? <laughs> or, you know, did you have other plans? What was that feeling like when it first got acquired? Uh, wow. So we, we never had the intent to sell a business. Um, one of our goals was to really create a really awesome web hosting experience for all our customers. Uh, now, one out of five SMEs back then when, when I was running the business um, used Vodian. We were that popular. We really had like uh, a huge market share in Singapore and we did that because the customer was always our priority and we wanted to take really good care of anybody that you know, wanted to use our services because we were previously customers of the industry before. So we knew 
um, very well what the pain points were. Every time something happens with a web hosting company or, or your service, it is really hard to get support. And that's not what we wanted for our customers. So when our customers uh, chose us, you know, we had four pillars that we were committed to. One was support, next were speed, uh, uh, stability and security. So those were the four pillars that differentiated Vodian from the rest of the people or the rest of the companies out there. Um, and we wanted to do a really, really good job um, about it. Um, so uh, I, I guess, uh, sorry, what, what was the question again? I forgot. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, whether or not, you know, it was straight away thinking about retiring or, oh, you know, right. how, how were you planning to move on after that acquisition? So, so when, when, when the acquisition did happen, uh, it was with an Australian acquirer who was looking to ex enter the Southeast Asian market as well. So when that happened, um, it seemed like the right time, the right place with the right person. The goals that we had, both Vodian as well as our acquirer, uh, were aligned. We wanted to expand in the Southeast Asian region. So that was when the acquisition happened. And uh, we went ahead with it. It, it, was, it was quite a surreal moment because, um, you know, that was a big amount of money. And after the acquisition, um, after, after stopping like a business that you've been working on for 17 years, it, it became quite a, a moment of... Uh, uh, a crisis of, of personal crisis for me in, in terms of a, a exist, existential crisis. I, I really didn't know what to do. And e eventually I figured that um, I wanted to become a, I wanted to travel the world. So that's what I did. I packed my bags in 2018, uh, sold everything in order to do that. Uh, so that I, I wouldn't have anything to worry about in Singapore. Um, and I traveled full time around the world for two years. So, wow. yeah, I guess that's what happened. Uh, it was like a eat, pray, love journey for me, I guess. Um, I've never been able to do that prior. <laughs> so when, when I could, I guess that, that really like changed things and gave me a lot of perspective, uh, gave me a lot of introspection and, and learnings about myself. Um, yeah. So, so, so that's what happened. To, to look back, what do you think were the right moves you made that led to your success? So it, I, I, I like to think that it's not one single move or one single action that uh, resulted in our success. In fact, uh, we went, my co-founder and I, we came from the same school. So we went back once and I remember one of the questions that the school asked us was if we were to change and go back in time, were there anything that we would, we would change? And both of us had the same answer. Like we, we wouldn't change anything because I think all these things happen for a reason and that all these things happen to give us like learning experiences. So what I said just now, I think that's something that all entrepreneurs go through. The ups and downs, the hurdles, the obstacles, the challenges, um, and having to come out with solutions and find our, find our way I think that's something that really made us into who we are today. So um, one of the things that I did in my two years of travel is to really distill what it took in those, two, uh, in those, in those 17 years uh, into a framework. And that's what I'm doing right now because I'm coaching entrepreneurs to do the same thing and be able to scale up their businesses. And the way to do that is, is really through five main principles, not just one or two right actions or right moves, but a complete system uh, that, that you need to follow in order to give your business that kind of right foundations or the fundamentals uh, to scale up. This is Money Mind on CNA right. 938, and we are speaking with internet entrepreneur Alvin Poe, who sold his web hosting company, Vodian Internet Solutions, for $30 million. And if you have any questions for Alvin about his entrepreneurial journey, do call us at 66911-938 or text us at 96311-938. So 
it's great to hear how you managed to build yourself up as an entrepreneur. Um, tell us, you're going to be one of the judges and speakers at the Singapore Young Entrepreneurs Award 2020, which is a joint initiative by JCI Marina Singapore and co-organized by the People's Association Youth Movement. Is that going to be just another award ceremony for up and coming entrepreneurs? Tell us what that's about and why you felt the need to get involved in it. Um, so this is the SYEA and, and um, the reason why I joined it is because I, I find that it's not just an award ceremony, but it's also mentorship focused. So there are four main things that I think are important for businesses. Uh, one is focus. Focus is knowing what to do, the right things to do. Because as entrepreneurs, most of the time, it's not a lack of things to do, but having too much to do on our plates, that finding the focus is really, really difficult. So the first of the four is focused, uh, knowing what, what the right things to do are. The second thing is accountability, being able to do those things. Um, the third thing is actually uh, execute, executing them uh, based on knowledge. The knowledge part is sometimes a little bit elusive. Um, so to get that from like mentors or, or from advisors, that's, that's going to be tremendously helpful. And the fourth thing is community. Because most of the time when, when we do business and we run on businesses, uh, it can be a lonely journey. So having a community of trusted people, of, of peers, that's going to be tremendously useful as well. And that's something that SYEA does. It's not just an award ceremony, it's actually an, a complete ecosystem. So entrepreneurs that, that join this, um, there'll be a series of programs and seminars uh, to, not, to equip them with the knowledge and skills and to give them these four aspects uh, on top of just being a competition. Right, definitely. Uh, focus, accountability, executing based on knowledge as well as community, which is ever so important for any sort of entrepreneur wanting to start up and stretch those networks and, and making them work for your business as well. Now, mm -hmm. I understand, um, yes, uh, nominations are now open for SYEA or the Singapore Young Entrepreneurs Award 2020. Uh, what qualities will you and your fellow judges uh, be looking out for? Uh, well, the basic criteria is, is well, uh, it's on the website as well. It's actually uh, a short list. There will be, um, we're looking for youth entrepreneurs, obviously, and youth is defined by anybody that's uh, younger than 35 years old. Uh, they must also be Singaporean or Singapore PR, running a Singapore incorporated company that's live and must be at least two years in business. Uh, ideally, the business model or activity will be related to the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals as well. Um, and that's the basic criteria that we are looking for. And business masterclasses are one of the highlights of the Singapore Young Entrepreneurs Award 2020. What are some of the webinars that nominees can look forward to? Oh, actually, over the past few months, there's been uh, a lot of webinars and uh, dialogues that have already been launched um, you know, so again, these programs are programs that focus on all the aspects that the businesses are looking out for. We are, we are looking for creativity, we are looking for problem solving skills, you know, uh, business strategy. So all these uh, bring forth the kind of knowledge that all these entrepreneurs require. Um, in fact, we have a few more webinars coming up. Just, in fact, tomorrow there will be one more uh, about doing business in China. This is organized by uh, the partners OSG Youth Alliance and SCAPE and we'll be bringing in, we'll be bringing in an industry experts to talk about um, how we can succeed in doing uh, business in China. So this is on November, November 14 tomorrow. If people are interested, they can just go to tinyurl.com slash SYEA success in China to sign up. All right. Thank you for that, Alvin. And uh, we had a question from a listener, Solomon, who was very intrigued by uh, what you said about traveling the world earlier. And he asks, what are your favorite countries? Wow. Uh, the thing about traveling, I realized, is that it's going to be so personalized. When I travel, I guess uh, I found out a lot about myself as well. That's something that I didn't know in the past. If, if, if you travel, if people travel... Um, I think there are a few categories that we all fall into depending on what our pre personal preferences are. Well, are you a shopper? Are you an adventure seeker? 
Uh, are you the sort that likes to just chill out with a drink by the beach um, and all that? And over my travels, I, I started to realize more about myself because I, I didn't say no to all these experiences. I went to try them, I went to try them all out uh, and eventually found a, a groove and found like what really appealed to me. So all these countries that I visited, I really appreciated because of the experiences that I got. Um, I liked Manhattan uh, because of the vibrancy. I love taking a, a road trip just through nature in Edinburgh. Uh, I, I love like spending time in Poland, just living life there. Uh, and like, you know, snowboarding in Japan as well. Like all these are all different experiences that I'm truly, truly appreciative for and got, got me to realize more about myself. So uh, I guess I don't have a favorite per se. Uh, I, I just like all these different countries for all their different experiences that they gave me. Well, we'd like to thank you for sharing your experiences with us, Alvin. Thank you for your time today. We've been hearing from Alvin Poe, who is tech entrepreneur and now coach to other entrepreneurs who want to scale up their businesses. You can learn more about his scaling methodology at alvinpoe.com slash playbook. And if you'd like to find out more about the Singapore Young Entrepreneurs Award, head to their website at syea.cc.